All right, and welcome back to Play On Sports Broadcast of North Coast Section Division II Softball Championship here from Cottrell Field at St. Mary's College. Right on the line there at third base. And the, that pitch is outside. Tried to back tried to backdoor messed us over there at first base, but that throw is low and messed us able to get back. Ross, nice job over there at first base, able to dig that one out. And here's the one one pitch. Well, that change up there. And that looks and now, similar to that first called strike, but maybe a little further outside. She misses the corner. Now 2-1 to Morgan. This is about where... And there's strike two to Morgan, right in there. This is about the stage where Mestas had a little bit of trouble in the first. She was able to get the first... So you're able to get outs on the first two, two or three batters, and then after that, it started to kind of fall apart. And now, now we have Drake who hits a batter, and now let's see if she can get out of this one. And that pitch is low. Now count is full. Ness is likely to be running on this pitch, and 3-2 count with two down. And there's the pitch, and that's in there for strike three. She got Morgan looking, and Drake gets out of the inning. Yeah, you can't do that. Gone down swinging to end the inning. She, Drake leaves one on base, and after one full inning, it is Conquer three and Clayton Valley nothing. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here today? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. All right, and we're on top second. And that first pitch is swung on and missed by Fredzis for strike one. And right away, Mestas gets right back into strike mode early on. And this one is dropped down, but very quickly to the ball is the third third baseman, Seaver, and she she's able to throw Fredzis out. Yes, Seaver was ready for that one. She was playing in, clean pickup, and was able to fire it over to first for the first out of the of this inning here in the top of the second. All right, coming up now is gonna be number five, Sita Manoa, and that one there is a strike. First two batters, first pitch strikes to each of them, again for Mestas, and that one is swung on and missed. Way ahead in the count now, 0-2. Coach Coddington tell her to scoot up. And that one. It's a little high, it looks like, for ball one. Yeah, telling her to scoot up in the batter's box a little bit. And that one looked like, that was right at the numbers there, but called the ball. And that one is in there, dropped. And they check down with the first base summer to see if she swung, and they're going to say no swing on that one. So it's now 2-2 two -two to Manoa. Did he Wait. did he call that a foul ball? The first base umpire? Okay, so uh I got connected back to uh the uh that's not first base's call letting me go on air. But uh I just checked the uh the license. Did she swing or not? 
And it looks like they're trying to go over. Maybe she, they're trying to say maybe that Manila fouled this one off. And that's what the fir that's what the first base umpire called. I don't know why he would call that, but it looked like she could have gone, and he didn't. He didn't give a signal. He said foul ball, which clearly wasn't a foul ball. And it looks like they're actually going to make it. It will be two two. Kind of have an argument from the Clayton Valley dugout on that one. But as it stands, it is 2-2 to Manoa. And that one is strike three. So and after that confusion, she goes down looking. Two outs in this inning. Two quick outs here in the in top of the second. Looks like Mestas has kind of settled down a bit. But now we're back to the top of the lineup, and it's going to be Randall. And she swings and misses on the first pitch. Another first pitch strike. That's seven in the game. And that stat is so important. Get ahead of these hitters. That just misses there. Maybe a little bit on the outside. Randall hitting 519 on the year with 23 RBIs. That one is kind of tapped away foul. Yeah, barely got a piece. She's trying to. She's trying to get on real quick here. You see her swinging as she's taking her first her first step towards the Randall bag. Line. That one is high. Randall lined out to the second baseman, Covioni in the first on a really good diving stab by Covioni. And this one is slapped the other way just past the diving third baseman. Seaver, and that's going to be a base hit. Yeah, no, that got on Seaver very quickly. She was just too far in to play that one, and that one just was screaming right by her. And so Randall gets on base for the first time today. And now Galini's going to come up. She dropped down a near perfect bun in the first and was able to get a base hit out of it. And she takes strike one. Yeah, that bun was nearly perfect, Zach. That one is high. Again, Messis has been very good about throwing first pitch strikes. She has th she's faced four batters this inning to this point, and she's thrown first pitch strikes to each of them. This one a swung on and miss, and and on the th on the pitch, Randall's going to take second. She's able to steal that one easily. Looked for a little bit, Fellafini had a little bit of hard time getting the ball out of her glove. Uh, it's slapped and the low liner is caught there at short by Amon and the, and the inning is over. One, one left for Concord and we'll move on to the bottom of the second. Concord still leading three nothing. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school sports action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And we're back here at the bottom of the second as Drake takes them out again. 
And that one is a strike there to the catcher, Felafini. It's going to be Felafini, Seaver, and Daniels here for Clayton Valley in the bottom of the second inning. 3 nothing is our score as the Minutemen have the lead. Clayton Valley left one on last inning. One was a hit by pitch, and this one is very high. Concord scored three in the top of the first inning, with two of them coming off, off of an error by the right fielder, Morgan, as the ball got by her. That now, one just close. misses. Yeah, looked close there. And catcher Davis asking the umpire where that one missed. And Drake likes to work slow. She likes to control the game. And that one is also called a ball. Looked like it was almost in the exact same spot there, Zach. As Davis isn't able to hold on to that one. Sometimes umpires don't get, won't give you calls if the catcher drops the ball. Especially at the lower levels. They own And this one is tapped foul and right over. Looks like Drake took a little bit off that one. Fouled right over to Clayton, Val Clayton Valley coach Morley there. That one is fouled off as she probably swung at ball four. And no call, Morley asking for a call because it, it was a foul tip. Three, two. This one is fouled, and this one is going to get out of play. That second, second straight batter where, da where, excuse me, <laughs> where Drake has had to throw a lot of pitches. She threw a lot to Morgan, and now has thrown a lot to Felafini. As this one just misses on the inside for ball four. Yeah, it must have been inside there because that looked right at the numbers, but uh, I guess it was a bit inside. And they get the leadoff batter on for uh, the first time in the game. They're going to have a pinch runner here. That's going to be that's going to be number twenty-one, Jenna Sakowski. And now Seaver will come up to the plate. There are a couple games going on here on the St. Mary's campus. We also have the NCS Division IV Boys Championship on the field just behind us at Louis Gisto Field, where as this one is fouled away. As St. Mary's leads Piedmont in that one, 2 nothing, and that one's in the bottom of the first inning. Siva way ahead of that one. And this is the first time that Clayton Valley has gotten someone on base with no outs. So let's see how Drake can respond here. And that one just misses inside as well. Almost looks like, looked about the same spot where the ball four was for, to Falafini. Uh, one one count here to Seaver. Runner on first is Zakowski. And this one is bunted foul. For Clayton Valley, almost a good thing it did go foul because Davis was jumped out of her couch very quickly yeah, to get that, that one. Quick. Ahead one, two. And winds and deals. This one's tap. A tap. This one looks like it could be two. And this one is good. They will get one. A Seaver's going to try for second, and she will make it easily on. And she on, was, on the throw that got away from Ross there at first. So it's going to be a force there at second. At, with Ben Apio able able to make the get the force there at second, which takes care of Zakowski, but the throw was low and got away from Ross, and and it allowed Seaver to move on to second. Yeah, but Ben Apio, she's a, she's got a great arm over there at short. 
Just a little late on the throw. Throw was a little off as well. Uh, Clayton Valley has a runner on second and one down. As they're saying, this one actually hit Daniels in the elbow, it looks like. Daniels didn't seem to move on that one to, to indicate that she was hit, but it's, she apparently got skinned by the ball and she's going to be able to take first. That's a second hit by pitch. And now two on for Clayton Valley. And I didn't see that one either, Zach. But it must have must have got her. This one must have on the elbow, yeah. Must have grazed her. But now up coming up is going to be Caitlin Covioni, as she has a very good opportunity to drive in some runs for Clayton Valley. As there are now runners at first and second with one down. So Drake here in a mini jam. Let's see if she can get out of it. This one is going to be. Looked like it was going to be on the outside, but the umpire said Covioni went, and so it will be strike one. Seaver on second, Daniels on first. And this one misses, as w misses for ball one. It's been a small strike zone here in the early going, Zach. An inside part of the play does not appear to be there at the moment. And here's the pitch. This one is fouled and almost into, into the Clayton Valley dugout. And again, Drake is able to get ahead in the count one, two. Covioni's first plate appearance of the day and the pitch as that one dips and almost just sank away from Covioni for the strikeout. Yep, and when you're in the head, when you're ahead in the count, you can throw pitches like that and make these hitters chase. That was about the perfect scenario there for Drake getting the strikeout with two on and one out. And now up is going to be Artiega, Artiaga, I should say. And this one misses up and away. Oh, these two teams split their their two matchups this this year in regular season play. And so so they're very familiar with each other, and even, and so they're not going to be take. If there's something in the strike zone, these teams are likely going to be swinging at pitches because they know these pitchers very well. And that one is fouled and just over the the bleachers here. Yeah, and Zach, they do know each other very well. Going off that, Kristen Morley said when we were talking to her before the game, she said they just prepare for themselves. They don't, you know, they they've already played conquered twice. They don't prepare for the other teammate though. They only prepare for what they can control and that's themselves. And this one swung on and missed. Strike two. Almost a slider there on the on the outside. And now 2-2 two -two with two down. Big situation here for Concord. They get out of this. This one tapped towards short. Ben Apayo is not going to have a play. She was able to prevent it from getting it out in the left field, which probably would have scored a run. Yeah, and Randall wasn't over there at third because she was trying to cut it off, but unable to get to it. So Ben Apayo was there, but then there was no one at third, and she had no play. So now we got the bases loaded. And that's going to be an infield hit for Arteaga. And now the bases are loaded for for J.C. Amon as we get back to the top of the order. This one is fouled, this one in the foul territory. Uh, as that is both Davis and, and Randall who come together and I don't know if there's miscommunication or not, 
it was a very tough play over there near the visitor's dugout. I mean, you're not going to get any help over there. Yeah, just a lack of communication there. But in, but in any case, Drake is now ahead in the count, 0-1. Two down here in the bottom of the second. She deals with this one, is fouled off. Randall may have a chance at that. Ben, ben Ohio. Ohio out of nowhere oh. makes the catch. But she, and she is slow to get up as she kind of collided with Randall at the same time. She's able to get up and she's going to... What what an amazing play. A great play there by Ben Apio coming all the way over from short to make that catch on the on the low pop up. She's got some speed. Did you see that, Zach? She was just on her horse over there. She was she's got an arm, she's got speed, she's got it all as a shortstop. And she made a great play to to get Drake out what could have been a, an ugly inning. This is definitely one of those situations where you're going to have a pitcher like buying them lunch or something, just saving the day like that. All right, we're going to. Conquer's able to get out of the inning unscathed. They get out of bases loaded situation as Ben Apio makes an amazing play to get out of this one. Concord still leads 3 0 as we head to the top of the third here. Benapile was a bit slow getting up there, but we'll, and we'll see whether or not she actually remains in the game. Play on Sports will have live coverage of the rest of the North Coast section baseball and softball finals tomorrow, Saturday, June 1st. We'll have 10 more games total five baseball and five softball with coverage beginning at 1 p.m. as the spring championship schedule comes to a close. Don't forget to check out PlayOnSports.com to watch live and archive broadcasts from around the NCS and beyond. We're your home for North Coast section sports coverage, PlayOnSports.com. And this is Cook who hits this one out to short and this one is gonna be caught there by Amon for out number one. Going back to that catch by Benapayo, so far that's the the play of the game. That would have, if she didn't catch that one, the AB would have stayed alive, and Clayton Valley had the bases loaded there. Zach, it was a big situation, and Benapayo got conquered out of it. And this one is high to Drake. And Ben Apio has come out on deck, so like she will remain in the game, even though she looked like she was a bit slow getting back to the dugout after that collision. Two-0 here to Drake. And the 2-0 is inside for ball three. As now it's Mestas who's kind of feeling the, the pinch of this strike zone, which has been fairly small on the inside part of the it plate. It has. It's been, it's been small everywhere, Zach. You know, it's, but we'll see as the game, as the game goes on here, if, if it's consistent or if it moves around a little bit, if he starts giving inside corner pitches called strikes. This one is knocked deep in the left field as, and just short of the warning track is Artievia there and left to make the catch. Yep, Drake gave that one a bit of a ride, but not enough. Uh, and now it's gonna be Ben Apio coming up here. As she made an she made an amazing play there in the first to, to end the inning on a on a sliding catch up. And in the first inning, I mean, she, hey, she's been all over the place today. She has a couple of great plays defensively, and she had a base hit in the first, which rolled, which rolled past the right fielder and scored two. Yep, she ended up on third base after that. Two zero here to Benapio. She fouls it off. Yep, and she can be patient. She can still be patient. First first strike she's seen in the A-B, so. 
she's going to be patient here and wait for her pitch. And the, that one is fouled back into the glove by Pena, Benapayo, and this one is now, the count is now 2-2. Two, two. two down here already in the top of the third, as that one is going to be high, and now it's a full count. Cook popped out to short, and then Drake fly out to deep left field. This one is launched deep in the right field. This one is foul. As Ben Apayo gave that one a ride. Yeah, she got a hold of that one. It did not quite have home run distance, but it but that would have been at least, it looked like a triple for Ben Apayo had that been fair. And with her speed. And, and she works the walk. Great at bat there. With two outs, that's a fantastic at bat. Worked the full count, nearly had extra bases that just went foul and is able to work the walk. Now a two down, it's gonna be Ross up at the plate. And that one is fouled back. Ross singled to, Ross singled in the first inning. She picked up an RBI with Ben Apio scoring. And that one is a strike. That, dude, that outside corner seems to be there for both pitchers. It's just that inside corner right. yeah, I know. is not I... there. And that one is swung on and missed. And Mestas will get out of the inning unscathed. One left for Concord at, as we moved on to the bottom of the third inning with Concord still leading 3-0. As we get to the bottom of the third inning, it's going to be Willis, Mestas, and Morgan coming up for Clayton Valley. Willis grounded out to short in the, in the first. And that one misses on the inside corner, Again, ball one. The, the inside. That inside corner. Both pitchers not getting those calls. What it does, it runs up both pitch counts, actually. Get the outside corners, but not the inside. This one is slap foul to the right. A little late, but able to keep her hands inside and foul that one off. Counts even at one. One one to count here to Willis. And one one. This one is tapped over to third. And again, she 
Willis grounds out. Good job by Randall there. On that high chopper, they will gather it, take a nice crow hop and deliver a strike over to first base for the first out of the inning. And so we had heard Kiara Willis from the PA, but it appears that she is now up. So Willis appears actually fouled that one off on that, on that ground ball in some way. Maybe bounce off the plate. Okay, I was wondering. And this one misses, so now it's going to be 3-2. Did you see a foul? I did not. And it appeared to me that it just went right to third base. Maybe I might have missed maybe a foul off her foot. Or There's some things that I'm not seeing here today, Zach. I'm missing, I'm missing a few things here. Counts full. In any case, 3-2, here we go. And this one is fouled. That was a screamer down that third base line. One hop in fair territory and then, and then curled foul. Three, two again, and, got, and she got Willis that time swinging. Yep, up out of the zone. Got Willis to chase. And a great job there by Kelly Drake to get the first out of the inning. And Mestas is up. She was hit by a pitch the last time up, square in the back. And that one misses on the outside corner, ball one. Standing way up in the box, trying to get on it early. And that one is also outside. Mestas standing as far in as far forward in the box as you possibly can without actually being out of the box. This one is tapped fair, and this one is wow. going to just roll and roll and stay fair, and it was Davis who could not wrangle in that ball to possibly make that throw. Yeah, and that was, but that was a smart play by Davis. Once she wasn't able, once she realized she wasn't able to make that play, Zach, she thought she'd see how it finished rolling, it finished spinning, but it stayed fair by less than half an inch. And that's going to be an infield hit for Nessus, who's now staying at first for the second time today. And now it brings up Morgan. That one, that one off the outside part of the plate. It's a ball one. Morgan struck out looking in the first, which, was, which ended the inning. She got Morgan to turn out of the way of that curveball, but that one, but that one missed, and that's going to be ball two. And that one is low. Three and zero. Mestis on first, Morgan with a 3-0 count here. And that one There's is the outside corner. Clayton Valley missed a golden opportunity last inning where they had the bases loaded that one is a strike as well. A little bit of delayed call there, but again, that outside corner. Drake's been working it a little bit here in this at bat with Morgan. And here's the 
misses the pitch. This one is hit in the air, backing up is Ben Apio, and she'll make the catch. A great job there by Drake to battle back after being down in the count, 3-0. Able to battle back there and get and get Morgan to pop out to Ben Apio. And now Felafini will come up. She was able to work a walk last time. Ms. Mesta still standing at first. And that one is fouled back end to the net. Drake ahead in the count again. As this one is high. One on one the count. And that one is in there on the inside corner, strike two. If you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here today, tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We'll move on to the top of the fourth here as Concord leads 3-0. And a swing and a miss by Davis for strike one. Davis, who flew out to right field in the first, takes there for ball one. Cockers only had one hit since the first inning after they were able to score three runs on four hits in that one. This one has popped up to second. And that will be Covioni to make the catch. And that'll bring up, and this will bring up Fresdis. And she grounded out the third back in the second. And another first pitch strike there. That's first two batters this inning. First pitch strikes. That's a great way to start off for Mestis. Mestas pitches, and this one is fouled off in well over the bleachers here. Quite over our heads. And now she's well ahead, as Mestas is well ahead in the count 0-2. Looks like she's starting to throw a bit harder as well. At least that last pitch was. You see a couple different styles of pitching. Some pitchers you actually see Brent throw their hardest in the early innings, and then you actually see some who kind of leave it in the tank for later and then right. are able to kind of bring that speed later on when needed. Right, also loosening their arm up a little bit. They just, like you said, different styles. And this one has tapped out the short. This one's going to be close, but they're making the play as Almond with a very good throw. So now Cita Manoa will come up. To the plate, number five. And that one is in there for a strike on the outside. 
Another first pitch strike there for Mestis. Just a bit low. Manoa struck out looking back in the second. And that one is on the outside for strike two. Manoa showing bunt. And that's low. She's going to do it again. Show bunt. Pull back. Here we go. 2-2. Two, two. And oh, and this one is lined wow. right at the third baseman. Seaver, as, and she had no time to move and went right to her glove. You know, that's one of those plays where she's in the perfect position. That got on her before she even knew it, and her glove was just right there. She was able to catch it and end the inning. And that will end the inning. Three up, three down for Concord. Clayton Valley quickly gets back into the dugout as they trail here going to the bottom of the fourth, three nothing. The crowd is definitely filling in here as there's, def there's probably at least a couple hundred people here now watching the NCS Division II Championship here between Clayton Valley Charter and Concord. So we're about to begin the bottom of the fourth inning and it's going to be started off by Clayton Valley's third baseman, Rachel Seaver, who had that screaming liner go right to her to end the, end the top of the inning. And it half seems that way. You see a player make a great defensive play, and they're up in that very next inning. And this one misses on the inside, ball one. And this could be a great spot for her to get something going here for Clayton Valley. Clayton Valley has had some opportunities in this one. They had the bases loaded in the second inning, but were unable to capitalize on that situation as... As Drake changes up on Seaver there and gets her to swing through it. And this one it misses on the outside corner. Yeah, a bit high. This one is ripped in the left field, and right there is the left fielder, Francis, for the put out. And that almost went over her head. You know, you always want to take a step back first because you can always come forward, but she looked like she maybe misread it at first, came forward, and then was able to recover and make that catch in left field. She was able to, she was able to recover fairly quickly and easily on that play, and there are, there's now one down. That one misses. Much to the chagrin of the Concord fans here in attendance. And that one is in there for strike one. Yep, look like outside corner there. Counts even now, one and one with an out here. Bottom of the fourth. And the 17 game winner, Kelly Drake on the mound. And lined just off of the off of the glove of the third baseman there, and this one is gonna be a base hit. That one just ticking off of the top of the glove of Randall at third. It almost was a change up hit to it third was, base. It was, yeah. 
it was a liner, but it ended up being slower than Randall seemed to expect it to get there. Yep, and a little higher. It was just a little awkward for Randall, and she was unable to make the catch. That's going to that's gonna put, put a runner on for Covioni, who just pops it up, and that's going to be caught by Benapayo at short. And a quick second out for Drake, and now it's going to be Artiaga. Artiaga singled it back in the second inning. As this one misses high and away. Daniels at first. And this one is going to be lined out of play. And she's a little bit ahead of it there. Two outs here, bottom four, NCS D2 title game. This two two line right to Benapayo, and that it, and she will rocket that throw yep. over for the third out on a rope. And the and the side is retired. That will end the fourth inning as we move on to the fifth, with Concord still leading three nothing. As we get ready for the top of the fifth here, it's going to be back to the top of the lineup for Concord as we will have Randall, Galini, and Cook. Randall has been up twice already today. She was lined out to second base, and she also, also has a single back in the second. And that is ball two from Mestis. She's going to be very patient here, ahead in the count. And that one is low for ball three. Yeah, now, now Mestis has got to come into her. This, this is near an automatic take for Randall. And. She does take it for strike one. There's there. that outside corner. Most of the day it's been when Raddy's have been up. Now we have a lefty Randall and she gets the call. Strike two here. Randall, Randall swing looked like she was actually maybe trying to slap it down the left field line, trying to attack that hole out there. And she does slap it over to third, but very quickly to it was Seaver, but her throw is high and and brings Daniels off yep. the bag, and that's going to be a, a hit for Randall. Yep, Daniels had to come off the bag for that high throw. And now Galini is going to come up. 4.52 on the season. And she shows Bunt here, and she pulls the bat back for ball one. Coming into this game, I should, I should say, because she's had at least, she had that bunt early on. She's also lined out to short today. 
That one's in there, strike one. She did not show bunt that time. And now here she shows bunt again, pulls it back, and now she tries to drop it back down again, but she's going to foul this one off. Now behind in the count, we'll see if she actually still shows bunt or attempts the bunt here or if she's going to swing away. And this one tap right back to the pitcher messes, but she throws it in the center field. And that's going to, not only is that going to make sure that Randall is not safe and can advance, Galini moves all the way to second on the throw. Wow, and it looked like Messis just rushed that a bit. You know, you want to get, I think she was thinking double play in her head. Got that out too quickly. Forgot about her mechanics and just try to get it there as quick as possible. So instead of getting just the one out at second, no outs, second and third. And, for Concord. And we're going to have a trip to the mound from Morley. And, and Cook's going to be up. At this stage, second and third, already down 3 nothing. no outs. What do you think this conversation is going to be like? You know, right now I think it's just calmed down. I mean, they haven't, right there, that was an out, at least one out, Zach, you know? I mean, I think, and she was, she settled in. The last inning was a 1-2-3 inning, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. And so, just settled down here. Three is, Clayton Valley can come back from three. That's nothing. But they start giving up more runs, it's going to be tough to come back. Now here's Cook. And she'll take ball one. And you don't want her to start overthrowing or thinking about it too much. Cook has popped up twice today. And there's strike one. The first time was to mess us, and then the second time popped up out, out to Almond at short. And that one runs outside for ball two. Third baseman Seaver crashing hard on each of these pitches. And now, they, now they've caught Randall in a rundown and they get her there at third. Yep, and a little aggressive there because she saw Seaver crashing so hard, no one was covering third. And that was a great play by Amon to get the back, to take the throw back door yeah, from really, Felafini. It really was. She got there quickly and got Randall in a rundown. Now so they, now it's just third base. Now it's a big first out for Clayton Valley to get out of that situation. Is that one, if you're keeping track, that is a 2 6 2 put out. On that play, Galini did move over to third. And Cook takes ball four. Cook a bit unsure there, but that was ball four. So now here, here comes Kelly Drake. Drake already has a, a single today and a run scored. She also flew out deep to left field back in the third. Yeah, deep to left. She gave that one a ride. That one is low. And Cook will, eat, will take, take second on the defensive indifference. She almost slowed up enough to almost try to to make the catcher, Falafini, make a throw. And this one is hit in the left. And there's a, a catch, and this throw is going to one-hop the catcher and will be late. And with a sack fly for Drake, and now it is 4 nothing. Yep, Galini scores. And, and Drake really did her job there. And on the play, Cook moved over to third. And 
now it's been a pile coming up. And that one is a strike. It's the first run for either team since the first inning. 4 nothing is our score. And Ben Apio hits this a high ball in the center field, and this one is going to be caught by Mason, and that will end the inning. One run in for Concord in the inning on one hit and an error, and we will move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Concord leading 4 nothing. As we're about to begin the bottom of the fifth, Drake has not allowed a run to this point, allow, allowing only three hits in her first four innings as Concord leads 4-0. You have to go along with a walk and four strikeouts and two hit by pitches. The line looks fairly similar to the one that she put up against Petaluma in the semifinal game. Just what I was thinking in that in that game against Petaluma, where she gave up five hits, four strikeouts, and a walk, pitched a complete game shutout to beat the number one seed. And now facing the number three seed in Clayton Valley, and this one is ripped on left field line, but this one will be foul. And now it's a quick 0-2 to Amon, who's leading off the inning. Willis and Mestis to follow. And the pitch, this one is outside. Drake playing a little bit with her being ahead in the count, trying to see if she chase. Conker got their fourth run on a sack fly by Drake. This one is tapped up the middle. Base hit for Amon is. And, they, and, the, and the center fielder almost backdoored Amon on that. And that was Cook who whose throw was right there, but Amon was, was aware enough to realize what was going on and able to get back. Yeah, good job by Cook there to try to get an out. But Almond able to get back, like you just said, Zach. And they're going to lead off runner on here. And that could be big for Clayton Valley in this inning. Bottom of the fifth. And this one has popped up. Willis pops it up to second. And there for the catch is Galini. There's now one out. Mestis has been on base twice already today. She has a single and then a, she was hit back in the first. And this one is rip foul. Yep, she jumped all over that one. So she was hit. She was hit by a pitch in the first, and then her single actually never even got past the pitcher's mound. Really, it just rolled and rolled down the first base line and just never went foul. Yeah, continued to spin and 
Stopped less than a half inch from the foul line. That and one's ripped. Mestas hits a deep to left field. This one is gone. Wow. As she, she quickly gets Clayton Valley back on the board. And she has cut the lead in half. It is now 4-2 on the blast by Mestis. Wow, and that one got out of here in a hurry, Zach. And I thought that was going to be foul. It started, it started tailing away to the left, but snuck right inside that foul pole. And so with one swing of the bat, Clayton Valley with within two runs now of tying it up here in this D2 title game here in the bottom of the fifth. Only one out. But she gave that one a ride. That one got out of here quickly. Wow. She was able to turn on that one and and as you said, that one just wrapped around the foul pole and was able to stay fair. But maybe because it moved so quickly, it didn't have time to, to go foul. And this one is high. It's the first sign of life we have seen from the Clayton Valley offense all day. It's also the first time they've had two hits in a single inning. Now here's Morgan for Clayton Valley. And that one's in there for a strike. Yep, there's that outside corner again. Morgan struck out looking and has popped out to short. And swings and misses on that one. Strike two. Two is our score here in the bottom of the fifth. Clayton Valley finally getting on the board here in this inning on the two-run home run from Mestis. And this one is ripped into the gap. This one is going to get down, and, and Morgan is going to put on the brakes at, as the left fielder, Francis, is able to cut that one off. So like you said, a little bit of life now for Clayton Valley. With only one out, Morgan got on after that two-run bomb by Mestis, and now that is their third hit of the inning, two singles and the home run, and now it's good. That is going to bring out the the Concord coach Megan Connington to to have a chat with their pitcher. Took a while for Clayton Valley to get their offense going, but now it seems that they have started to kind of lock in as they're now batting their third time through the lineup. Yep, starting to get locked in, you know. Drake is human. She's able, she's getting hit here. Um, she had a great line before this, and she still has a good line. She's only given up two runs on five hits, but she's got to try to find her stuff again and settle down and try to get out of this inning. Still leading four to two here. Bottom of the fifth, it's been a two run fifth for Clayton Valley. There's one out here in the inning and Clayton Valley now has the opportunity to do more damage. Morgan on first, Falafini now at the plate. She is 0 for 1 today, so there's a walk and a strikeout. And this one is tapped the third. You got one at second, but you're unable to get the back end, and Falafini will wow. be on first. And Randall, a great job there. I thought that throw was going to be a little bit wide, but. Or I thought at least she was going to be safe because it was just a slow roller to Randall, but Randall, great job receiving the ball and good footwork and threw a strike over to second. They're able to get the lead runner, Morgan. And now Felafini Fel will be pinch ran for. And that is going to, and that's going to be Zakowski running again for Falafini. As they're now two down in this bottom of the fifth inning. NCS Division II Softball Championship. The four seed Concord and the three seed Clayton Valley. And... That one is in there for a strike from Drake. 
both representing the DVAL. Two division rivals split the DVAL title. Split in their head-to-head -head matchups, both winning on the road. And that one is low. As Davis with the check, check on the runner, Zakowski there. Four two here in the bottom of the fifth. Two runs in already for Clayton Valley. And that one is high. And the pitch. And that one will, will stay outside. And now it's a three one count. For yep. Seaver. Drake gonna take her time. This is a big pitch right here. Seaver flew out to, to left in the fourth and reached on a fielder's choice back in the second. And this one is ripped right to Randall and, and that will end the inning. Great job there by Randall. Got on her in a hurry, but Concord able to get out of the inning. Drake. Drake is able to get out of the inning, but a two-run home run from Mestas cuts the lead in half. It is now 4-2 Concord as we head to the sixth. And, and we're back, back here in the top of the sixth. And this one is ripped foul by Ross. All over that. She's got to straighten that one out, but she's on that. Who leads off, Ross leads off the inning, followed by Davis and Fred says. Mestis now on the mound after she had a two-run home run to cut this lead in half. She's got to be feeling a little bit better now. Gave herself some, her, some, own, some run support of her own, I should say. And now able to uh, come back out on the mound and go back to work. And Ross fouls it straight back to the screen. Ness is, ha is ahead in the count, one, two. Four, two is our score. Conquer leading Clayton Valley. And this one is fouled. This one looks like it's gonna get into the trees behind the home dugout. And it remains one, two. And this one has tapped the third. Up with it is a third baseman, Seaver, and she will make the play. Good hustle though by Ross over there, sliding into first base. Concord is only six outs away from its third NCS Division II championship in the last four years. They won it just last year and then won it back in 2010 with with the one with 2011 the, going to Petaluma. So Courtney Davis now up. First pitch strike from Mestis. And this one is gonna be a base hit in the center field for Davis. And you could see a different approach to the plate. It almost seems like they're trying to be more aggressive here with Mestas out after having given up the two runs in the bottom half of the inning. 
And now this is going to bring uh, Francis. She's grounded out twice today, once the third and once the short. And we're going to have a pinch runner over at first, and that is going to be Lotu Manoa. And so is Bunt. She tries to get that one, but nothing doing. And the throw down. And she got Manoa on the steal. A great throw from Falafini to get her. Yeah, a great job to block the bag there. Great job protecting second base, able to put the tag down for the second out of the inning. And that, that was, was a strike, so Mestis is ahead. That was Covioni on the tag. A, a great throw from Falafini and a, and a great tag from Covioni on the other end. And this one is swung on in this strike too. O2 the count. And this one will be high and away. This one will also go high as the count is now even at two and two. Just got a piece there. Crestus fouls that one off. As Messis continues to attack the strike zone here this inning. She, she induced a ground out to, from Ross. Davis singled, but then the pinch runner Manoa was caught stealing for the second out. And now it's a full count to Frestus. And this one has popped up. And there's going to be the catcher, Felafini, who drops the ball. And this is going to keep the inning alive here, Zach. That was huge. Keep the inning alive, and Fresnes has new life on this one. Yeah, count is full, but that was huge there. She's had a great at bat so far. She's been fouling these pitches off. Catcher coming out the crouch to catch pop up is no easy play. To get rid of the mask, find the ball, and make the play as Fresnes fouls this one off, not out of play. This one. Just next to to the PA announcer on the other side of the fence from us. Three two count here to Francis. She shows bunt, pulls it back, and this one is inside ball four. I was a I wasn't sure. That actually looked it may have actually clipped Fredsis. Now here comes Sita Manoa. Yeah. And Manoa, Sita Manoa coming up. And there's strike one. Yep, with her you gotta specify. Say the first name, there are three sisters on this Conquer team. Three Manoas. And this one is tapped to Amon. She throws on the first to, for the out. And Clayton Valley gets out of the inning. No runs, one hit, one left. As we move on to the bottom of the six, Concord leads 4-2. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information 
and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth of this NCS Division II softball championship, it is going to be Ashley Daniels to lead it off, followed by Covioni and Archiaga. 4-2 is our score here. Concord with the lead, looking for their third NCS championship in the last four years. And that one runs inside for ball one. Yep, we've seen that call all day, the inside Pitch has not been called. Drake, who overall has had a pretty good game today. This is there, and that one is Rip Foul. She started the show a little bit of a little bit of uh, wear in the armor, as you could say, in the last inning. She allowed three hits, which is the in the fifth, including a two-run home run by Mestas. And it was the first time all game she'd allowed more than one hit in an inning. This one is tapped to third. Randall up with it and throws to make for the out. Not the easiest play by Randall as she had to range to her left to get that slow roller. But great footwork and a nice throw over to first base to get the first out of the inning here in the bottom of the sixth. A quick update on the... NCS Division Four Baseball Championship also happening here at St. Mary's College over at Louis Gisto Field. It is St. Mary's 5 and Piedmont 4 in the bottom of the 4th. And this one is low to Covioni for ball 1. That game also being aired on the Play On Sports Network. This one is hit a low liner out to second base hit. And that is Galini, Galini who makes the play. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the sixth. And now number nine, Arteaga comes to the plate. Arteaga is, is one for two on the day, a single in the second, and then she grounded out to short in the fourth. Clayton Valley has four outs left to play with here in this championship game as Arteaga lines this one in left, and that one is caught by Fredsis for the third out. A one, two, three, one, two, three inning here as we go to the seventh. That is the first one, two, three inning from Drake all day, and it comes at a great time in the sixth. As we head to the top of the seventh, it is Concord four, Clayton Valley two. Back here on Play on Sports, We're watching the NCS Division II Softball Championship. And leading off is going to be Randall as she takes strike one. Concord leading 4 2 as they are now three outs away from their, from their third NCS Championship in the last four years. Count evens up at one and one now. Mesta still on the mound here. And this one is slapped. And this one will find its way into the Clayton Valley dugout. Or a foul ball. And Randall is behind in the count one, two. Galini on deck. And Cook in the hole. Randall 
is two for three on the day. She has two singles and she lined out to second base. She's also made some great defensive plays. And this is a tapper out to third. And that one is gonna pull the first baseman, Daniels, off the bag. Sievers throw just a bit wide. And Randall Speed again causing that errant throw. Yep, that's the second time we've seen that happen over there at first base with Daniels having to come off the bag because the throw was a little wide or too high. Almost have to give more credit to Randall on that one than put than, than putting fault on Seaver. Those are two very tough plays yeah, and they are. the speed of Randall makes it that much tougher. And this one is high to Galini for ball one. Galini is one for three on the day. She scored twice. She scored back in the first after on a, she was actually the first one of the game on, on the Benapayo single and then pass ball in right field. And, and that's gonna be a steal attempt there for Randall and she is gonna get in there. The ball beat her, but it was on one hop and it pulled the second baseman, Covioni, off the bag. Yeah, kind of towards home plate and Randall was able to slide to the right of the bag and touch it and she's safe at second. And that is high to Galini and now she's way ahead in the count, 3-1. Yep, just wait for her pitch. She's gotta throw her a strike here. So Galini's just gonna be very patient. And Petir, that is in there, strike two. Randall on second, no outs. This one is popped up to second. This one is gonna drop in sh shallow center. Smart decision and, there. And Randall's not able to go anywhere as that ball is quickly picked up by the center fielder, Mason. But a great decision there by Randall. She was gonna be gunned down if she decided to go to third. Very smart of her to stop. Go back to second and was able to slide head first into second safely. She did she did technically what you were supposed to do there. She froze on the pop-up just to make sure that it dropped. But it also was close enough to the back to be able to get back. And that one is low to Cook. Concord has runners at first and second. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh, already leading 4-2. And that bunt will be foul. Cook is 0 for 2 with a walk today. Her walk came in the fifth. And that one is fouled away. Yep, and she's on that. Drake on deck. She had, a, she, had a, she had a sacrifice fly back in the fifth to score a run. And that one is tapped foul. Good job by Cook to stay alive, fouling off pitches. Drake will be followed by Ben Apayo if we, if we get there. And the pitch, this one is tapped. Right to Seaver, turns and throws in Safe. this. And, and Cook will be safe at first as she dives in the first base head first. And now the bases are loaded. Wow, and here comes Kelly Drake. Big bat, a lot of power. And that was a great job by Cook there. It was a slow roller, she's got speed, and then she gave that extra effort and slid head first in the first base. So you get the bases loaded here in the top of the seventh with no outs. Now we're gonna have another meeting at the mound to kind of go over strategy here. You have bases loaded with no outs here in the seventh. The situation where, I mean, quite frankly, you cannot allow a single run in this situation. So you likely will probably see the infield pulled in. Yes, yep. To try to get the out at home, there'll be a ground ball. Now the outfield alignment will be interesting to see whether or not they pull in the outfielders 
in, in a bit as well. I think they'd be pulled in a little bit as well. You want to minimize any kind of damage, Zach. And the infield's going to be in, hoping for that ground ball for the play at home. But Drake's not necessarily the person that's going to put it on the ground. If she does, it's going to be it's going to be coming down quick to one of these infielders. Got speed on the base paths, and first pitch is in there for strike one. Randall at third, Lini at second, Cook at first. And Drake, who is is one for two today with a sack fly. Her one out is a bomb to left field that was caught. And this one is hit deep in the left field, way back there and up against the wall. This one scored, one run has scored, two runs have scored, three runs have scored, and it is a basis clearing double for Drake. And this one has been blown wide open. Yep, I mean, you knew, it, you knew with Drake, you know she's got power, and that her last two ABs, we've seen her give both those last two ABs, she's given the ride to that ball both times in her last two at-bats, both to left field. One was a sack fly, and again, this time she finds the gap, hits up against the wall, and clears the bases. We're gonna get a pinch runner, and this looks like it's going to be that's number six, that's Daisy Manoa. Yep, she, this is her second time there. She was caught stealing the first time. She pinch ran. Now we have Benapayo at the plate. Benapayo takes strike one. The three run double now has, now has conquered up seven to two here in the top of the seventh with no outs. And that one is low to Benapayo. It's one and one. And this one is slapped out of play over the over the bleachers on the home side of the plate. One two to Benapayo. That one is low. Count evens up for Ben Apayo at two and two. This, ending has been, this game has really been broken open by, by Kelly Drake's three run double that to deep in the left. This one is popped up by Ben Apayo. That's gonna be Covioni with the catch. And that's the first out of this inning and three runs are already in. Now Ross comes to the plate. Ross is one for three on the day. Her one hit coming back in the first inning and it was for an, for an RBI, which drove in Ben Apayo. This one has popped up. And this one is going to be into the seats. And it's a 1-1 count here to Ross. And that one stays low. Daisy Manoa standing at second. The pitch runner for for Drake. And that is a swing and a miss by Ross. Yep. Way late on that one. As Nestas went went upstairs and got got Ross to chase it. And there's a strikeout for Amestas. A big out for Clayton Valley. As that is now the second out of the inning. Yep, now here comes the catcher. Courtney Davis, number 15. Davis is also one for three on the day. Her one hit came last inning. And that one drills Davis. She'll, she'll head on over the first. This will 
bring up Fredsis. And we're probably going to have another pinch runner here. For Davis, that's going to be number three, Lotu Manoa. We have a Manoa on second, a Manoa on first, and we have a Manoa on deck. That's right. That we do, Zach. And right now it's Fretz's at the plate, and she fouls this one off. This one's going to go right over the top of us and hit the canopy over the, the snack stand. So Mestis ahead in the count 0-1 here, trying to limit the damage this inning. This one skips a number of times before it even got the home plane and right, right by Fellafini and both runners advance. And the pitch, this one is tap the third. Seaver mishandles and this one is gonna be safe and the throw is gonna go wide and both runs will score on the error by Seaver. And Seaver looks like she's holding her arm. Yep. Seaver shaking her right arm there. It's a throwing arm in. Don't know if it was something she tweaked as she made the throw, as she fielded the ball. Uh, she doesn't look like she doesn't want to come out. No, this she, game. she doesn't want to come out. She's she's pointed to her shoulder, but she does not want to come out of this game. Two runs scored on on the air, and it's now nine to two, conquered. And Seaver will stay in the game. She tries to stretch that arm out just to. Get that pain to kind of subside for now. And, uh, Francis on first. It's now Sita Manoa at the plate. And this one is ripped right past the coach Coddington there down in the third base coaching box. I'm sure coach appreciates it was hit hard. She's thinking about 20 feet to the right. And this one is ripped down the left field line and that one is gonna curl foul. She's seen the ball real well right now. Just needs to straighten it out a bit. She's jumping on it a little bit early. It's been a big inning for Concord. Five runs have scored this inning. Three of them on the three-run double by Drake. And another two on the on an error by, by the third baseman Seaver. And Manoa will strike out. And we will head to the bottom of the seventh. Conquer three outs away from its third NCS Division II championship in the last three years. They now lead nine to two. And welcome back to Plan Sports coverage of the Division II North Coast Section Softball Championship. Conquered on top here, bottom of the seventh. Stay tuned for our PlanSports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports. 
playonsports.com. Kelly Drake back on the mound. Three outs away from a complete game and more importantly, a section championship. She gets that one in there for strike one against the shortstop, J.C. Allman. Yeah, looking for back-to-back -back complete games. In the semis, they defeated Petaluma. She had a five-hitter complete game shutout. This one, not a shutout. Two earned runs, six hits, four strikeouts, and a walk, and two hit-by-pitches. So not a bad line either in this title game. Looking for, their, like you just said, their third title here in four years. And let's not forget the three-run double she just hit to break this yep. one open in the top of this inning. And this one bounces low for ball one. Drake has been their workhorse. About 90% of the innings that have been thrown by Conquer pitchers this year have been by Drake. And, and she is only a junior. So this is success that Conquer could have even going into next year. And that one is a ground out to Galini. And, and we are now two outs away. Nice play by Galini there as it that got on her quick and it took a high hop at the last second and almost kind of jammed her. She was able to able to corral that near the heel of her glove, able to throw it over to first for the first out here in the bottom of the seventh. And now Kara Williams will come up. To 0 for 3 on the day. You see a slight shift there by by the shortstop Ben Apayo, but that one hit Willis, I guess in the foot, and that will put her on first base. And I'll bring up Mestis, who last time up, finally got Clayton Valley on the board with a two run home run in the fifth. And that home run left in a hurry. She is two for two and has been hit by a pitcher as she takes strike one. Messels was hit by a pitch back in the first, had a single in the third, and then it hit the two-run home run in the bottom of the fifth, which at the time made the score four to two. This one has popped up. This one's going to get out of play. And it's now 0-2 to Mestis. Mestis responsible for the two runs today with that two run jack she hit in the bottom of the fifth inning. And outside, and Willis is able to scamper back to first. Drake still ahead in the count, one, two. Conquer two outs away from a Division II championship. This one is ripped in the right, and that one is going to be caught. And this one is going to end it on a double play, a diving catch in right field. That catch is made by Winningham, who oh, relayed it back to Galini, and the rock relay back to Ross with a double play to end this game. Winning, Winningham ends it, huh, Zach? Winning. Ham, yes. Whittingham en ends it as she starts the double play on the diving catch. The relay for the double play is conquered. Wins this game 9-2 to two and, and claims the North Coast Section Division II Softball Championship. They're third in the last four years. And that one, that was a fantastic catch in right field. That ball started tailing away from her. She was able to go down to the ground, catch it, and they doubled off Clayton Valley to end it. Beginning to wow. end, we saw some great defense by Concord, whether it be Ben Apio or there in right field by Winningham. It seemed that they were that they were on top of their game from beginning to end today and against a league rival that's maybe even all that more impressive to put together this type of performance. All right, we're going to take a quick break as we'll come back for our post-game show at as the awards will be handed out here. But this one is over as Concord is the NCS Division II softball champions beating Clayton Valley Charter 9-2. to Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All right, we're back with the Play On Sports postgame show of this North Coast Section Division II Girls Softball Championship. Our Concord came out on top 9-2. to two. Their third in last, their third section title in the last four years. And first off, let's talk about our player of the game, and that very obviously is Kelly Drake. It is. We were uh, we were debating a bit before Kelly Drake hit that bases clearing double that really opened up this game. And her line today: six hits, four strikeouts, a walk, two earned runs, and uh, three hit batsmen, I believe. And um, but she really did her damage. I mean, she did a good a good job pitching and also on the offensive side of the ball. She did damage in both areas today. At the play, Drake was two for she was two for three. She drove in four runs on the day, including that three run double in the seventh. And it, and at the plate, she looked completely locked in. Even her one out almost left the yard. Yeah, it did. She had those before that double, that bases clearing double, those two at bats before that, she gave both those a ride to left field, one of them being a sack fly. So on the day she ends up with, uh, what is that, four RBIs? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Four RBIs on the day. And really just an amazing performance. And these teams knew, you know, know each other so well. When we were talking to Codding, Megan Coddington before the game, the head coach at Concord, you know, she said it's going to be a competitive game. You know, our approach has been different because we know this team. You know, these players are friends off the field. They've played together before high school. And, um, you know, they really, like I said, they really didn't change anything. They knew each other's strengths and weaknesses. And Concord just did a great job today all around. And overall, you think about some of the things we saw today outside of not only just the, the key hits and key moments, but, but think about some of the defense that we saw today from Concord. Uh, the play of Randall over at third. Ben Apio with that with that streaking catch yeah, that, that she made, running all the way from short into foul territory, making the catch on a, what looked like should have just dropped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ben Apio is right up there for player of the game as well. She that that play that she made in foul territory was amazing. She was over there before the third baseman Randall was. <laughs> She's got some speed. She's also got a great arm from shortstop, and she was making defensive plays all day. And you know it was just it was just an impressive game from Concord, and then what may be more impressive is you think about that defensive play, which I think in most games would might have been like the play of the game, but then you look at how the game ended, the diving catch there by Winningham, the relay to Galini, and the first for to Ross the double play to end this game, and say, I don't know if there's a more it, it it'd be tough to beat to find a more exciting way to end a championship game. Yeah, it really would, especially against a rival that you've. That you face already twice this year, and that was a fa that was that was a fantastic, fantastic play. Great way to end the game, almost as good as Ben Apio's play over there with that ball in right field tailing away. Just amazing. Great job for Concord, winning their third NCS Division II title in four years. Back to back titles as well. <laughs> One last year, exactly. And we got to see kind of the whole package from this group, and I think that will just about do it for us here at at. Same control field at St. Mary's College. So for my broadcast partner, Alex Richmond, our producer, Tim King, and our videographer, Hans Webb, I'm Zach Farmer for PlayOnSports.com. You've been watching the North Coast Section Division II Softball Championship. And be sure to stay tuned for all the other Play on Sports Championship games that we'll be broadcasting here all over the weekend from the North Coast Section and the rest of California. So once, the, so once again, for... For the rest of our crew, this is Zach Farmer signing off. And be sure to come tune back to, in the playonsports.com. High school sports lives here.
one match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. 